the interesting thing about having new bandmates is it's, it invigorates the band design. These people that, that evolve into the band, it, it, it creates lightning and, and sparks again. And the sparks are always in me. Midnight Creeps. Never heard of him. Is that rolling? Okay. So, Jonas, uh, tell me, um, sir, what was your two favorite things that you've learned by being in the Midnight Creeps for almost, what is it, eight years? <laughs> <laughs> Dreams don't come true. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and that's it. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> it always kind of creeps me out when bands lose a bandmate and decide that they're not going to be a band any longer. I can understand it in a way, but I kind of see. I mean, it's it's my band. It's mine. <laughs> Living up there, um, I was 23. I was w working at a gas station, living in my friend's basement, like my friend's family's basement. So I was kind of like Charles in charge, and my girlfriend had just broken up with me. I, I lost a town council race, and I <laughs> I got uh, asked to try out for the band um, because their previous guitar player left to move to England to chase a guy, actually. Anyways, yeah, 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 and and I don't know. I'm, I'm the guy that booked everything. I'm the guy that knows where we're going and who we're talking to. And uh, after the, the creeps went on a hiatus, not exactly sure on, on the year, but they were uh, not playing shows or anything for like a year and a half or something. And I was living with Jason, and his first practice with them, he was on his way back and kind of jokingly just was like, hey. If you guys need another guitar player, <laughs> don't look any further. And uh, he asked them, and they were down. They already had all these people that were showing up to the shows. I mean, they had been doing this for years already. They had been working hard to do it, so... I guess, yeah, when Jeff left, I just kind of jumped in. I just felt lucky to be a, along for the ride. I remember when he quit the band, I remember him grabbing your purse and throwing it across the, <laughs> the boulevard in somewhere in Pennsylvania like a football. Like, he, was, he was like, if you say one more word, I'm done. And you were like, one more word. <laughs> so the band comes to a screeching hop. He grabs your purse and just hooks it across the street. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> remember he hauled off. Funny. He, I, I was being a cunt, but he hauled off and gave me like a few punches on my shoulder, and like it was kind of going on for a while, and I don't remember if it was you or Jason, but one of you did like the "I love Lucy" thing, like, "Oh, uh, maybe you should stop hitting her." <laughs> <laughs> He did, though. He, he, he's got that.
must be inner and say you won't. You expect it to party every night. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's Monday night, it doesn't matter how sick you feel or whatever. Pantries. I've heard tales of early midnight creep stores where they would play, say, Salt Lake City and then load their gear off the stage into the van and drive through the night to play Seattle the next night and just barely make it in time. That's one way to do it, but you certainly uh, don't have as much fun as uh, if you get to hang out afterwards and do things like sleep and drink. You got all those different personalities and addictions in the same, the same van for six or seven weeks. You can't, you can't get away from these people. No matter how, no matter if they're your, you know, how good friends you are. Like the first one last year was uh, well, in 2009. It was only three and a half weeks. Then. Uh, Toured again last this past summer, and that was for a full six week tour. It was interesting. Yeah, how so? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the 2009 tour, I believe, in Philly, West, West Philadelphia. And, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty rough. It's not <laughs> I just like Will Smith. Uh, I don't know. We we went to this after the show. We went to the to stay with um, some squatter punks <laughs> at their squat house. And, uh, so they, they promised us weed and Super Nintendo. So all right, we'll go there. And we go there and it's like maggots and like black mold in the ceiling and no running water. You had to pull some chain or just like, here we have to be or maybe it'd pour in the water in the, I don't know. But whatever it was. Yeah, people eating out of the out of the dumpster, like pizza out of the dumpster. These kids that probably grew up middle class. I don't know why it's just like cool to live as a squatter punk or whatever. So I, I like five minutes I was in this house and like, no oh, screw this. I go to sleep in the van and my, my drummer came with me as well. And um I got, maybe I was asleep for a couple hours when I woke up airborne <laughs> because a car had slammed into us from behind and I didn't know what what the hell was going on and it, they hit us again so I thought they were breaking in I'm like trying to pull my pants up I was you know, sitting in my underwear or whatever and uh, I was like what, what the fuck's going on <laughs> like, um, and then like, we saw the car pulled into the street and Driver, so I'm calling um, my, my bandmates like, dude, <laughs> the van's been hit, the van's been hit, <laughs> and like, we're sleeping in it, 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 like, and so they, they all got on the roof or something, and cops came like hours later, and I, I didn't get any sleep that night, uh, and like the, the squatter punk kids were like, oh yeah, a, a car down the street got, got firebombed last week here, so like, that, that would have been really nice to know before. Decided to sleep in the van or just park there with expensive music equipment. Anyway. Well, I mean, there are different tours. There's a different feel for each tour. I mean, the first two were just really crazy and fun. And um, the, the last like, national tour had some issues. Like, I lost my wallet in Milwaukee. I found out some like really crazy family stuff on the road. So I was in a weird place, and then there were some other issues as far as, um, man, like the, that time around, it seemed like Jenny just kind of got more of an angry drunk than a happy drunk. She'd always be a fun drunk, but oh, it just, it got way out of control a few times, especially with her and Jamie being in a relationship, and it's all serious this time around, and Oh man, I do not envy that boy. But at least he was there to kind of catch the bunch of it.
because who who doesn't like a nice blonde haired catastrophe for breakfast? Okay, manga, chin ka kuchi. What is that? What did, which one did I say first? Okay, manka chinka kichi. That means big vagina penis mouth. Jimmy no papa de iki. That means come on my tits. Haya kut nami lo. That means suck on my vagina. Right? Yeah. Ew, I'm, no, you're not sucking <laughs> on my vagina, you fucking pig. Honestly, her personality isn't much different. <laughs> off stage than it is on I mean I think that for her it's just like she's allowed to let go a little bit more when she's on stage but I mean her personality on and off is <laughs> it's not much different and develop that relationship, you you learn uh, things about yourself and about the other person and about the relationship. And then you look back and you're a totally different person than you and I. Chairman Meow. Can you see him? I don't know, because she's blonde and awesome. She's a beautiful person. She kicks ass. She's a great cook and a dynamo in the sack. And I've known her since she was a teenager. Like love is, don't mean to sound like a fucking hippie, but love is kind of music. It's, it's being vulnerable. It's, it's, it's being honest, it's being passionate your tour. And he worked for about four months on booking the whole tour. And booking a tour is incredibly, incredibly difficult in a way that I can't even imagine starting to book a 
three day tour, let alone a six week tour. I was 22 or so, and it's it's strange when you're when you're that age. Just the world is so big and wide open, and and you kind of you have so many opportunities, and you can pick one or the other, or to be a doctor, or to puke in toilets for the rest of your life, and that's the one that I chose. <laughs> Skin, Jekyll and Hyde.